explosion. Mecha anime is one of Japan's most well-known pop culture exports. A variety of different robots have been created over the years. Designing those robots is a difficult task that requires a special type of creator. They are known as mechanical designers. Mechanical designers are experts at designing machines like robots and vehicles, including highly detailed internal parts. Okawara Kunio is Japan's first ever mechanical designer. The legendary creator is credited in nearly 100 anime series, including Mobile Suit Gundam and the Time Bokan series. Okawara's commitment to his vision led to his masterpiece, Gundam. We'll also feature another legend known for his innovative transforming robots, Kawamori Shoji. He specializes in robots that transform or combine, like those in the Macross and Aquarian series. Kawamori's method of designing is very unique. This time, we're taking an in-depth look at these two creators and the history of Japanese mecha anime they helped create. Mobile Suit Gundam began broadcast in 1979. The robot weapons called Mobile Suits became a sensation across Japan, and the anime is now one of Japan's biggest series. The mechanical designer behind the robots is Okawara Kunio. We received special permission to film inside his workplace. Countless famous robots were created on this desk with over 200 color pens and brushes. Above the desk is a seemingly random pile of valuable designs. The first anime Okawara was involved with was Gachaman, which aired from 1972. Okawara was assigned to work on backgrounds as a member of the art staff. Okawara created spec sheets for Gachaman's secondary machines. But his job wasn't only about machine design. This is a laboratory on the ocean floor. Okawara instructed animators that the entrance would be under the laboratory with space for a submarine to dock. He created machine designs that would be easy for animators to replicate. Fast 
from episode four, Okawara was credited as mechanical designer, the first ever in Japan. Okawara's work on Gachaman led to a steady stream of mechanical design job offers. At the peak of the mecha anime boom, he simultaneously worked on four different anime episodes a week. No matter how busy work got, Okawara was always aware of the audience. This is a robot design from Yatterman. Fans love the unique enemy robots in each episode. Based on a washing machine, it attacks with a propeller-like part. For Okawara, one of the biggest goals when designing machines was how to make them appeal to younger viewers. There's another process that Okawara considers indispensable. That happens here, in a room that looks like a small local factory. This is a milling machine, used to cut metal and wood. This is a machine for drilling holes. This is a laser cutter. He also has a lot of screws. This is one toy robot that came from an anime. In the 70s and 80s, toy robots were huge sellers. So, toy manufacturers ended up sponsoring mecha anime. Therefore, to raise funds for an anime project, designing robots that could be developed as toys was essential. Okawara would show sponsors his handmade prototypes. Here's one the creator made in just four days. It's easy to see Okawara's influence on the final product. For Okawara, being a mechanical designer meant designing robots for anime and toy manufacturers. Okawara's creativity has captured the attention of fans worldwide. In 2023, a solo exhibition was held in Hong Kong, celebrating Okawara's 50th anniversary as a mechanical designer. The exhibition featured over 300 design images and illustrations from 34 anime series Okawara worked on. His robot designs are very popular in China. This is his fourth solo exhibition. For any anime fan, an Okawara designed robot is special. Fans lined up to get their favorite mechanical designer's autograph. Uh, 
I am a fan. Even if when they release uh, a Gundam Seed, I went out and uh, actually tried to watch all of them, even if I don't know uh, to speak Japanese, just to look at the animation and the Gundam designs. It was really, really cool. We visited the home of one of Okawara's Hong Kong fans. Gundam EFSF works in education. He has a room just for anime collectibles. More than 1,000 figures and plastic models from Gundam line the shelves. And one of his newest treasures? A book that Okawara signed during the latest event in Hong Kong. His favorite Okawara robot is this classic model. Mobile Suit Gundam is a landmark series that put Japanese mecha anime on the map. Okawara, who had been working freelance, joined the production team from the start as main machine designer. It was an illustration from a popular science fiction novel. The animation director was interested in the suit-like machine design. How did Okawara respond? Okawara went with a samurai helmet inspired design to appeal to younger viewers. Okawara designed Gundam to be a bold adaptation of samurai armor. This is an early draft. The head of the robot had samurai like features. On the back were two katana inspired beam sabers. The body was designed to look like formal samurai attire called kamishimo. And for the legs, Okawara went with a new design not found in traditional mecha anime. This is the final draft of Gundam's design proposal. Animation director Yasuhiko brushed up Okawara's original design. The engrossing story and exciting mechanical design made Mobile Suit Gundam a huge hit. Gundam's popularity now spans the globe, with actual life-sized robots being built. The enemy robots are also reason for the series' success. 2023年,那些形態都不會落後,都很潮流,即是他以前的觸角已經,哇,現在都未必做到。Among enemy robots, Zaku was one of the most popular. 
It holds a special place in Okawara's heart. There was no plan to turn enemy robots into toys, so Okawara had much more freedom. For Zaku, the only requirement from the director was for the robot to be a cyclops. Okawara designed the head to resemble a gas mask. He also attached visible pipes to the face, waist, and legs. In April 1979, the robots designed by Okawara began to move on the TV screen. Forty-three years since Gundam first aired. The latest in the series is Mobile Suit Gundam, the Witch from Mercury. The main robot contains circuits that glow with eye-popping reds and blues, emphasizing that it uses technology not found in other robots in the series. Gundam Ariel's design was decided through an open competition. The winner was 42-year-old illustrator JNT Head. Okawara's first design has since been followed by a new generation of mechanical designers that continue to build on Gundam's popularity. Macross has been popular in Japan for over 40 years, with seven TV series and 10 feature films. The iconic machine of the series is Valkyrie, a variable fighter with three forms. It transforms into an aircraft for fighter mode, a humanoid robot for batroid mode, and an intermediate mode called Gearwalk. This brand new concept had each machine transform depending on the situation. Fans around the world couldn't get enough of the design gimmicks. The YF-19 and the YF-21 um, are definitely sort of their standouts for me. I mean, it's both the uh, both the plane mode and and the robot mode just had a sort of futuristic feel while still maintaining something that could be, you know, somewhat plausible in the real world. One of the sort of key legacy franchises. You can't appreciate other mecha anime that was around at the time or came since without appreciating Macross. You know, it set so many um, with like with the transforming mecha. You know, it, it kind of broke loads of new boundaries. The mastermind behind Macross's beloved machines is Kawamori Shoji. Kawamori has designed machines for multiple anime series and directed episodes of Macross and Aquarian. His designs are characterized by robots that combine and transform. Kawamori's unique free-form style earned him the nickname the Wizard of Mechanical Transformation. Outside of anime, 
He is one of the theme concept producers for World Expo 2025 Osaka Kansai. This is where Kawamori works. The table is covered by a variety of toy building blocks. He works on a low desk over a tatami mat. パーツ落とすと壊れちゃうんで、落ちても壊れないに畳を引いて低く座ってブロック作業がやりやすくしたんですね。手が考えてるみたいなところがあって、半分頭で考えて半分手で考えてるような感じですよね。Kawamori showed us a toy block prototype. This is a prototype of Valkyrie's YF-30 model made by Kawamori. He strives to create aerodynamic designs that could realistically fly. And the biggest draw of using toy building blocks is that they can transform, just like in the anime. First, the jet nozzles become legs. Then, arms pop out from under the wings. Gearwalk is a plane and machine hybrid that hovers in battle. Then, the humanoid transformation. Kawamori's focus on realism is seen in every detail. Using parts found on a real fighter jet, Kawamori figures out ways to reassemble and transform the machine. Finally, the wings are folded back. This is how Kawamori is able to simulate transformations using toy building blocks. Although the anime is fiction, and imagination plays a big part in the process, Kawamori's mechanical designs always pursue a physically realistic look. Kawamori's pursuit of both style and functional beauty helped form the unique designs that fans adore. He began using toy building blocks during the production of the third entry in the Macross series. He has carefully preserved past prototypes. The Macross series came from Kawamori and his associates' desire to create a new type of hero machine. While in university, Kawamori joined Studio Nue, a team focused on science fiction works. His abilities were quickly recognized, and he became a professional designer while still a student. During one planning meeting with studio members, they discussed developing a new machine to replace humanoid robots. At the time, Mobile Suit Gundam was all the rage. Kawamori and the team had to come up with something new. あの、人型ロボットを作ってもそんなに差別化できない。もうすでにいっぱいあるから。なので、全く違うものとしたら何だろうっていうことで考えたときに人型に変わる主役目かを作ってみようっていうことで。An idea came to Kawamori one year later while he was on vacation skiing. スキー滑ってる時に膝を曲げて滑ってるっていうのがすごい。
This resulted in the reverse jointed gear walk. It was a brand new design that differed from a typical humanoid robot. The team immediately put together a toy proposal, but the manufacturer was not impressed. To get the project approved, Kawamori and his team proposed a machine that could transform from a plane into a humanoid robot. Gearwalk was part of the gimmick. And so Macross and the variable fighter Valkyrie were born. At the time, the Valkyrie had caught the attention of a certain creator. That creator was Okawara. あの、Thanks to these talented mechanical designers, the popularity of mecha anime has grown worldwide. Although production numbers have decreased, Okawara and Kawamori remain hopeful and have advice for future designers. せっかくその目かデザイナーになったら代表作に巡り会えるチャンスっていうのをなんか見つけてほしいですけどね。とにかく誰も見たことのないもの見せてほしいっていう感じですね。こんな手があったかって言って唸らせてほしいしみたいな